Hi, I'm John Storms, and today uh, the video is about setting up Lightorama boxes for DMX mode. And in all honesty, you don't have to really do anything to set your Lightorama boxes, and we're talking about these, uh, the typical CTB16 controllers. You don't have to do anything special to set them up for DMX. They natively know DMX. They've done DMX for years, for the, since the beginning, as far as I know. So this is actually a very easy thing to do. So what I've done is I've set up four Lightorama CTB16s, and uh, before I thought you had to number them with the starting channel, but actually it's a lot easier than that. So your first box, this is Unit 1, and Unit 1 will have channels 1 through 16. This is Unit 2, and Unit 2, when it gets DMX channel, automatically knows that it's going to be channels 17 to 32. Likewise, the third one, it knows that it's going to be channels 33 to 48 and so on. And then, of course, this one is unit 4 and it gets the next 16 channels. So the firmware automatically does this update. And I'll show you uh, the document. There's a table that Lightorama has that allows you to figure that out. So these guys are all hooked together with normal Cat5 cables, just like you would normally daisy chain these guys together. A um, couple of differences are is that the first cable, it needs to be a special crossover cable. This is because uh, in order to transmit DMX, Lightorama uses pins 4 and 5 for data, where DMX actually uses pins 1 and 2. So you need to have a DMX interface, and then from that DMX interface, you run that this crossover cable. Okay, This one I picked up from Holiday Coro. Uh, I've made my own before. They're really, really simple. So in this case, I'm using a E131SACN um, bridge, which uh, speaks Ethernet to my computer. So it receives E131 signals, which is DMX over Ethernet. It comes into the bridge. The bridge is configured. So this first port here is Universe 50. And then anything that's Universe 50 that's received here gets sent over this wire and then passed down the chain. Okay. So that's one difference. Normally you would have a um, <coughs> RS-485 adapter here, which you can also use for DMX. Um, the other thing I, that's a little different is down here on the end of the chain <coughs> is I've made a uh, terminator. So an RS-485 terminator, simply you take pin, you know, you just jumper the, uh, the pins with a 120 ohm resistor. And uh, I have a separate video on how to make those. Those are also very easy to do. <clears throat> and the purpose of that is, you know, as the signal gets passed down the daisy chain, when it gets to the very end, to the terminator, it'll absorb any residual signal so it doesn't bounce back and cause problems. And, you know, that reflection will sometimes be misinterpreted as a signal and you get channels turning on or doing weird things. So if you're seeing weird things, the terminator is a nice thing to have. Um, and you can also use that on a regular Lightorama network as well. Okay, so in terms of physical setup, you know, that's that's all there is. And of course, my lovely daughter uh, plugged in all the lights so that I can test it out to make sure it works because I'm planning on deploying all my controllers in DMX mode, in DMX mode next year. And I just want to make absolutely sure that everything works. So this guy's set up as unit ID 1, unit ID 2, unit ID 3, and unit ID 4. Okay, <clears throat> so now I'll show you the, uh, the software configuration. Okay, um, now the first thing I want to show you is I want to show you the Lightorama document. So if you go to Lightorama, you go under support and go to hardware documentation, and you search for DMX, you'll come across this document. Okay, it's their DMX do document. And here it tells you that you know when you're when you know lighter, when the Lightorama products are used in a DMX network, the unit's ID is map is used to map to a starting DMX address for the unit's circuits. Okay, and it's based on this table. Okay, so if it's Lightorama unit ID zero one, then the DMX address starts at one. If it's 2, it starts at 17. If it's 3, it's started at 33. So by using one of these 
Lightorama unit IDs you can get to all 512 channels in the DMX universe. Okay, and of course, you know, since 512 divides by 16 evenly, uh, you know, you can fit, I believe, up to 32 controllers onto one DMX universe if you really wanted to. So this is the, the way that you, you set the unit IDs. So it's very simple. You just set it, you know, to 1 through hex 20, and then this gives you the corresponding DMX address. All right. So next I go to my E131 bridge and what I did here is I configured it so that the first output port is set to universe 50 and of course this is a multicast uh, bridge so this one doesn't work in unicast mode it only works in multicast mode and it's on IP address 10.0.0.209 okay and that's and the, so that is setting up my DMX interface. Now in this case, I'm using the bridge, but you have lots of options. You can use something like an NTEC dongle or something that emulates an NTEC dongle, which is a USB interface. You can use the Lightorama RS-485 interface that will also do DMX. You can use a pixel controller. You can usually take a pixel controller like. Um, uh, Alphanet or uh, the SAN devices E682, 684, 6804, and use a port on that to send the RS-485 information. Um, the Falcon F16V2 actually has output ports, so you can actually plug in, you know, a crossover cable from that output port to your first channel. Now you still need to have the crossover cable going from that device to from the DMX interface to your first CTB controller. <laughs> but there are lots of options which you can use and usually what dictates, dictates that is how you have things laid out in your yard. So you know if you have happen to have Falcon controllers you can use that. If you don't have anything you can go out and buy a cheap bridge. Um, DIY Express does some really nice ones. So there's there's lots and lots of options. <laughs> okay so that's so that's my DMX interface. So next I go into Lightorama and what I've done here is I've created myself a simple sequence that basically I just went in said insert device and I'm running Lightorama 4.2.12 Pro version insert device below and recently they've made it so you can actually go in here and say add a DMX universe and so you can go in here and you can say add however many channels in a given universe and it will drop it right in there and that's what I've done here. So I just gave it, it said add, you know, universe 50 and give me 512 channels. And then I just did a, trace, a chase across them all. Okay. So that's, you know, the very simple sequencing. And if I click on one of these, you can see that it's universe 50. And this particular one is uh, address 6. Now, you know, a lot of people associate, you know, DMX universes with RGB, and that's very common use for dumb. Uh, dumb nodes and pixels, but you can have single channel DMX as well, just like this, and it works great. Okay, so then the next thing you need to do is you go to Edit, you go to Preferences, Edit, Preferences, and make sure that DMX Preferences you have allowed DMX editing. And in order to do DMX from Lightorama, you need to have the Advanced or Pro license. <coughs> and then you go to Network Preferences. And under Network Preferences, you go to the DMX tab. And what we're going to do here is we're going to find Universe 50. So we scroll down until we see Universe 50, which is right here. Click on it. Nope, not that one. This one. And we can put a comment here. So I'm going to say this is my test network. Now, if I was using like the Lightorama, um, RS-45 or an NTEC dongle, I would say use adapter, but I'm using E131, which is DMX over Ethernet. <coughs> so I click this to be multicast because my bridge only supports multicast, but if it did unicast, you could actually specify the IP address, which in this case is, you know, 10.0.0.209. And then you specify how many total universes are, are, are set. Okay, so I click OK. <coughs> Apply. 
OK. <clears throat> and then I click on play and it's all good to go. OK, so there it is working. So I'm just doing a simple chase across four uh, Ford Lightorama boxes. And just using the table that Lightorama provided, it's, it's very easy to get these guys running in DMX mode. They do both natively. And then I have other videos that show you know how to use different things as a DMX interface. I have, I have a video showing how to do the using a SAN devices uh, E682 as a DMX interface and then I have another one showing a Falcon uh, using the the Falcon pixel controller. Of course here I'm showing how to use, you know using it with uh, this simple DMX bridge and then uh, I also have another video that shows using it with the uh, Lightorama adapter. That's it.